testing. One, two, three. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jim. Good to be here with you this morning. We got a bit of feedback there. Welcome to everyone at home. I'm glad that you can be with us as well. Today's gospel is one that's pretty well known. Everyone's heard of the Doubting Thomas, I'm sure. So I think poor old Tom got a bit of a bad press, really. I don't think he was the only doubter amongst all the disciples. Can you hear me, Ian? Yep. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about how doubt actually fits into the Christian life today. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it anything? So, so that's what we'll, we're going to think about and, uh, and uh, as we pray together today we ask God to strengthen us and ask God to help us to respond to God's goodness to us in the service we offer for others. So let's stand and Jim's going to play our first song, And Can It Be? morning. We're going to be singing the first, oh, the, not the first, but the first, the third, and the, uh, and the last verse. I know how difficult it is again with uh, masks, um, and I know I'm blessed because I don't have to have one, but uh, I'm just here for now, but I, I, I know it's, uh, I know it's a, a lot, so um, let's praise God anyway. <laughs>
should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood. So recently we celebrated Good Friday and remembered the sacrifice on the cross. Then we celebrated the great victory of the resurrection which gives us all hope. And so today we continue to celebrate God's goodness to us and we ask God to grant us faith. Uh, as, as one of the people who came to Jesus said, Lord, I do believe, help my unbelief. So Lord, help us as we journey through life and as we are uh, challenged by happenings that we ask your help to strengthen our unbelief, to help us grow in faith and to grow in loving service of others. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Christ is risen, Alleluia. Peace be with you, says the Lord. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all our hearts, hearts are open, all, all desires are known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, our hearts by, by the inspiration of your, of your Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we, we may perfectly love you, love you and worthy make your Holy Name, through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. The two great commandments. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Christ our Passover lamb has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge. We have, we have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, thought word, word, and, and deed, and in what, what we have failed to do. We have, we have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not loved, loved our neighbors as ourselves. We, we repent and are sorry for all our sins. sins. Father, Father, forgive us. Strengthen, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness, to all who turn to him in faith, pardon us and set us free from all our sins. Strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God Amen. in the highest Amen. and peace, peace to God's Lord. people on earth. Lord, Lord God, Lord. heavenly Amen. King, Lord. almighty Lord. God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, whose absence leaves us in despair, but whose presence is overwhelming, breathe on us with your abundant life, that where we cannot see, we may have courage to believe, and we may be raised with you. Amen together. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, 
Send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in spiritual commitment to you, service to our local community, and in numbers. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have our children's talk. We've got someone to do the children's talk, but we don't have too many children. Unless you become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. Yes. I've got a big pause. Just hum a few bars amongst yourself. Oh, this is all right. Can you hear me? All right. I've got a bowl. I wonder what I've got in it. Well, let's find out, shall we? COVID. Have you heard of it before? It's been around a while. We're all getting used to sanitizers. These lovely things. And wipes and putting on gloves and keeping social distancing. Now, we know we have to do these things because COVID is a virus, it's in the air. We can't see it, well we can under a microscope obviously, but we can not only know it's there because of the effects it has. People are getting sick, people are dying, and communities are shutting down. But we don't know who might have it. We can't see it. We don't know that these things work, but we believe they do because someone said they kill 99.9% .9 of the germs. We don't know how effective they are but we use them anyway because we believe they work. Now, a long time ago, up in a room, the disciples were locked in and they were a bit scared because Jesus had just been crucified and they didn't want any trouble for them. But then who appeared before them? Jesus appeared before them. Now, there, full stop, that's an amazing story in itself. I don't know how I would feel if suddenly someone I know had died would appear in front of me. But that's not the story we're dealing with today, we're dealing with someone else. Thomas wasn't there. I don't know, maybe he was off looking for toilet paper, I don't know. But he wasn't there. The disciples saw Jesus and they believed. Now I've got a story to read to you and I'm going to put this down for a minute. You've got actions. Every time you hear the word believe, you have to go, oh, let's practice it. You ready? Believe. Oh. Okay. Here's our story. Okay, on the evening of the first Sunday after Jesus had been crucified, his disciples were together in a locked room. They were afraid of those who had, been cru who had crucified Jesus. Suddenly Jesus appeared, before, appeared there in the locked room with his disciples. It was hard to believe. Well done. But they saw him and Jesus showed them his wounds and his hands and his side, so they knew it was him. One of the disciples, 
Thomas was not with the others when Jesus appeared to them. When they told Thomas, he didn't believe. He had seen Jesus crucified and buried. How could he be alive? Thomas said, unless I see the wound in his side and put my finger in the holes where the nails were in his hands, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the lock room again, and this time Thomas was with them. Again, Jesus came and stood among the disciples. Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas fell on his knees and answered, Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You and I have never seen Jesus with our own eyes. The question is, will we be one of those who is blessed because we believe, even though we have not seen? I've got a little prayer just to finish off with. I'll say the first line and then I'd like you to repeat it. Dear God, thank you for the life of Jesus. And thank you for your promises. We believe in you and trust you. Even when we can't see you. Help us not to be afraid and to remember that you watch over us. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. But if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So please look at this painting for a little while. It's called Thomas the Doubter. Anyone notice what's wrong in the picture? When Jesus invites Thomas to put his hands in his side and when to look at the wounds, Thomas just falls to his feet and says, My Lord and my God. He doesn't actually go forward to look at that proof. So it seems to me that Thomas has been unfairly singled out as the doubter. He certainly did doubt, but no more than the rest of the disciples. Earlier that morning, Jesus had said to Mary, don't hold on to me. 
because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So do you think they believed Mary or doubted? And excuse me for what I say next, but after all, she was only a woman. They were gathered in fear, hiding behind locked doors. That doesn't sound like they were rejoicing at the good news. Perhaps it was just too unbelievable. And yet, later that same day, Jesus appears to them. That encounter took them from despair to faith, from extreme sadness to jubilation. As we've heard, Thomas wasn't there that evening. He missed out. A week later, he also saw and believed. You'll note that when Christ appeared to Thomas, he was so convinced of the reality, he did not need to touch those wounds. His proclamation, my Lord and my God, goes beyond what any other disciple had said of Jesus, proclaiming both lordship and divinity, proclaiming that Jesus was God. That's the first time in the gospel stories that this happens. It was the resurrection appearances that brought them all to faith. As we reflect on faith and doubt, we perhaps are aware of some Christians that we have met who never seem to have any doubts. From our viewpoint, they believe definitely and easily. Their faith is serene and unquestioning. They are wonderful people and we thank God for them. They go through life gracefully spreading goodwill and compassion as they follow Christ Jesus, encouraging those of lesser faith. Such non-doubters are beautiful, loving persons, and we thank God for them. But does that mean that these non-doubters are superior Christians, more advanced than those of us who may at times wrestle with doubt? Definitely not. Doubters are not inferior Christians. They're just different personalities. They see and feel things in a different way. Thomas was a doubter. The other disciples were doubters. Christ certainly did not despise them. Unfortunately, there are some people who think that doubt is wicked. To admit of any doubt is to disqualify oneself from Christian fellowship. But as you heard in the Gospel, the disciples didn't exclude Thomas because of his doubt. There are many places in the world, both now and historically, that if you said, unless this and that I refuse to believe, you could find yourself as a bit of kindling on a fire, or you could find yourself being tortured in a dungeon, and certainly you'd been thrown out. But no, the early church were able to live with Thomas and his doubts. He was still with them the following week. Doubt may be for some of us the very thing that clears up uncertain areas of our faith and then leads us to a deeper commitment. Doubt is often the springboard from which rejuvenated faith launches itself. Doubt, caused by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, is asking us to go deeper and further. Doubt can be a blessing, an uncomfortable blessing, but a blessing nevertheless.
God has readily used human doubt. Long, long ago, some Jews believed that God asked them of human sacrifice. Just think of the Abraham and Isaac story. But prophets emerged who said, I doubt God wants that. And through their doubt, the sacrifice of children in the valley of Hinnom was finally stopped. Long ago, many Jews were taught, God loves only Jews, others are rubbish. But some Jews said, oh, I doubt if God's like that. And from the stronger faith that issued from such doubt, the story of Jonah emerged, which declared God's love even for wicked pagan cities like Nineveh. Long ago, many Jews claimed that God could only be known and worshipped in the temple at Jerusalem. But one visionary had his doubts, and from his own experience, he wrote a psalm. Where shall I flee from your spirit? Where shall I hide from your presence? If I ascend up into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Then came a Jew called Jesus. He was a remarkable doubter of many of the things he'd been taught. He'd been taught that pagans, like Romans, were hopeless. But he saw a remarkable faith in the Roman centurion whose child is ill, was ill, or the Syrophoenician woman. Should I give the children's food to the dogs? Even the dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Jesus had been taught that women were inferior beings who should be kept hidden in their homes. But he doubted that, and he chose women to travel with him among the band of disciples. Jesus had been taught, and it was in the scriptures that, that taught Jews an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But Jesus doubted that. And he taught people, rather than scratching out eyes and bashing out teeth, love your enemies and do good to those who hurt you. It had been instilled in Jesus that the holiest thing in the whole world was the Torah and its righteous law. But Jesus doubted that because of his knowledge of God and instead taught that the holiest thing is love. In the story of Christianity, Doubts have again and again led to larger faith and love. Thomas and other people, like you and me who have our doubts occasionally, are not to be despised. Whether our doubts arise about the resurrection of Christ or about some other aspect of the faith, they should not be stomped on by heavy-booted religion. They should not be stomped on by heavy-booted religion. Some of the finest souls in our history are those who pursued their doubts with fierce integrity and found a larger faith. However, too much doubt can become fruitless. Sooner or later, we need to sort out the things worth living for and commit ourselves to them. Throw in your lot with what you do know and understand about Christ, even if it only be a little, a mustard seed, and just get on with it. Unfortunately, there are some who get so caught up by their doubts that their doubts stunt their lives. They constantly mull over their doubts rather than affirming their beliefs. And that's a miserable way, miserable way to spend life. If we are serious about honest doubt, 
then we should be honest enough to vigorously question our own doubts, especially if they're not helping us. Our doubts themselves need to be put under a microscope. And it's true that not all doubts are heavy, uh, healthy. Some doubts may be nothing more than our brain being brainwashed by the materialism and hedonism of this 21st century. You can only be happy if you have lots of things and have lots of money. We certainly know that's not true. Some doubts can be a cover-up for a fear that is not prepared to take the risk and launch out into the unknown. I was speaking to Gwenda Condi yesterday and we were talking about death because she's close to dying. And I said that dying is a bit like the young child who's in a burning house and there's smoke and she can't see out the window. But she can hear her father's voice saying, I can see you, just jump and I'll catch you. And so the child, knowing that her father has never lied to her, has always been there for her, was able just to take that leap in the dark and be called, caught in the father's arms. And she said, that's a beautiful thought because one of the Calvins was actually uh, caught in a, in a burning place and jumped out a window and was saved. It meant a lot to her. And the faith that we take with us, because no one can be sure, we can't be 100% sure, that's what faith is about. That's what hope, Paul says hope is not deceptive. That's what we give back to God. Some doubts may be an all too willing acceptance of the so-called scientific facts. And science and religion should never be at loggerheads because religion is about religious truth and science is about scientific proof. We can be so much more enriched by the scientific knowledge of things that are happening around us, even when we see the pandemic changing. We see, well, this is somehow like the process of evolution. Evolution isn't a dirty word. It means that God's creation is so clever God is so clever in the creation that he made that life changes and people and plants and animals change because the world changes and people have to change. And so rather than all being wiped out, they've got that inbuilt ability to change with conditions. Glory to God for being such a great creator. Glory to God for creating scientific minds that help us to understand this. Some doubts may be the result of sins that we refuse to face up to. A spiritual barrenness can result. Some doubts may stem from never having developed our own Christian understanding beyond that of our Sunday school teaching. Life is much more complicated than those messages. Some doubts can easily be the byproduct of disappointments, wounds, rejections and griefs. How could God let that happen? Some people see pain and suffering. How could God let that happen? But every parent knows that you can't stop your children from getting into trouble. You can love them with all your heart and soul. But if they want to do something dangerous, you can't stop them. And if you do try and stop them, they'll just resent you. And if God tried to stop us, we would resent God. So instead of saying, how could God let that happen? Recognize God's tears as God cries with us in the sadder times of life. Some doubts can just be a f the fruit of a negative rut that we've got ourselves into. 
or a habit which has taken us over. And some doubts can just be caused by depression or anxiety and exhaustion. And sometimes we just need the doctor to give us the right medication to help us feel better and help us recharge our batteries. With these exceptions, I believe most other doubts are usually a sign of spiritual health rather than sickness or malady. Thomas asked a reasonable question. Unless I see his hands, the prints of the nails, the mark of the nails, place my hand in his side, I will not believe. When Jesus came the next week, he didn't say, Thomas, get out of here. Rather, he, he just spoke directly to Thomas. Put your hands here. Doubt no longer, but believe. So as I said, it's really important the way the community dealt with Thomas's doubt. They did not send him away, saying he could no longer meet with them unless they shared, he shared their beliefs. He was still with them when the Lord came again and removed his doubt. The community that is accepting of difference is the community where those people find God. The Thomas Principle should guide us in the way we deal with people who do not share the same beliefs that we do or who believe differently from us. The community, including the public doubters, were praying together when the Lord came the second time. So it's in the community of, of those who believe fully and those who are just starting out on their way to belief where we find the Lord. So it's through acceptance of difference and a willingness to join together in prayer that differences are overcome. Not by causing someone adrift, not by making them anathema, but accepting them as a brother and sister and accepting there, but for the grace of God, go I. After that post-Easter encounter, Thomas had many long years to travel without seeing or touching Christ again. Yet he remained committed as a missionary, bearing the good news of Christ to places far away, to the very end of the known world. And there's a small hill outside Madras in India where people of that land say that Thomas finally paid the supreme sacrifice for his faith. There, far from home, he was executed for his Easter faith. So don't be afraid of honest doubt. Faithful doubt can be blessed and can redound to the glory of God. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of you, Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He said to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead. And he said to him, and he said that he had an old father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the only Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and 
everlasting. Let us pray for the world and for the Church. God our Creator, God our Creator, at the beginning of time you breathed life into your creatures and today you continue to breathe life into us during these unsettled times. Hear our prayer we offer today. Our response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world and for all the peoples of this land. We pray that you c that we thank you that we can live in relative safely in our country in our country. We pray for countries where citizens are tormented and live in constant danger. Father, we do not know this type of danger. So we pray for your protection on all who do. We thank you for our nation and leadership within all our levels of government. We thank, give thanks and pray for the scientists who have worked to develop vaccines for the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear prayer. We pray for your worldwide church, aspiring to make your word alive and relevant in the lives of millions. We uphold all the leaders of the Christian church, ordained clergy and others who minister in your name. For people who are persecuted for their faith, we pray for peace and freedom to gather in your name. We thank you that we are privileged to live and demonstrate our faith in our community. And Lord, we uphold all the missionaries who are working in uncertain places during these uncertain times. Some of our family of parishioners, um, some are family of our parishioners and we pray for their safety. For ourselves, like Thomas, we ask that when our lives do not demonstrate to others your risen power, that you reclaim us with your love and truth, and that we stop doubting and believe. We ask that you breathe on your church your spirit of passion and power, and put your spirit within us. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for the communities within which we live. For our parish, we pray for Father Scott and an improvement in his health. We give thanks for Father Jim, Lorraine, and the other clergy and the whole lay ministry team who continue to work in your name. We thank you for talents and time given to continue to make these services accessible to a wide audience. Lord, we pray that more talented people will offer to help spread the communication load. Within our parish family, we share in the joy of new life with the birth of a great-grandson, Oliver, for Terry and Anne Watkinson, and for the marriage of Nicola and Andrew, who were married here yesterday. We pray that your loving arms will enfold them as they venture forth together in years to come. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the sick the sad and the needy, scarred by sorrow, pain or despair. We uphold all who grieve for loved ones and for all who are in pain or anxious. When hearts are sad and tears overtake us, stand among us and bring us your peace. We especially pray for those on our prayer list or those we know who need healing. For all who are unwell, in hospital or in aged care facilities, Lord, heal them, comfort them, give them your peace and reassure them that they are loved. We pray for their families today as they work through the stressful times. Father, thank you for the workers in health facilities, for their commitment and dedication to improving the well meaning of so many. Lord, in your mercy. We bring you our prayers for all who have died. We pray for those who have died in the faith and for those who have never seen or believed. We give thanks for Thomas and for all your saints who have known you as the risen Christ. May we too recognize you in our midst, that with all your saints, so that we may come into the fullness of joy in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. 
Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Christ has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. Meet his name. Jesus. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let's share that peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be God, be God forever. forever. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Loving God, we thank you for this world of wonder and delight. You have given it to us to care for, so that all your creatures may enjoy its bounty. Lord, our God, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you that when we turned away from you, you sent Jesus to live and work as one of us and bring us back to you. He showed us how to love you and set us free to love and serve one another. Lord, our God, we give you thanks and pray. We thank you that on the cross, Jesus took away our sin, all that keeps us from each other and from you. He frees us from hate and fear, from all that destroys love and trust. Lord, our God, we give you thanks and praise. And so with everyone who believes in you, with all the saints and angels, we rejoice and praise you, saying, oh, Holy, oh, holy, holy oh, Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. And now we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. May we who receive them, <coughs> as Jesus said, <coughs> excuse me, Swallow the fly, I think. <coughs> right in the middle of the important bit, too. May we who receive them as Jesus said share his body and his blood. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave you thanks. He shared the cup with them and said, This is my blood poured out so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We proclaim together, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. You have gathered us together to feed on Christ and to remember all he has done for us. Fill us with your spirit that we may follow Jesus in all we do and say, working for justice and bringing your peace to this world that you have made. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, This, this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
eternal God, giver of life. In the breaking of the bread, we know the risen Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring new life to all creation. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Hello. Anyone else got a birthday they're hiding from us? That's you, Vicky. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vicky. Happy birthday to you. May Jesus bless you. May Jesus bless you. Congratulations, Figgy. Thank you for your lovely talk today, too. We remember George Manser and the family. Mary and Anne have got a new great-grandson, Oliver. Those who are making goods for the fair are asking for a little bit of help with ingredients, so you can bring those sorts of things and leave them in the little basket that will help people who are cooking up goodies. Barbecue roster, next Sunday, 7 to 10. It's a bit of an unfortunate time, isn't it, really? You'll have to uh, say a prayer every time you hand out a sausage. <laughs> Secretary is still needed for sales. The sales event, which was postponed, is uh, coming up in about what, three or four weeks' time. Come along, bookings are essential. And then the parish fundraiser, the first one was for sales, this one is for us. Uh, looking for assistance. Give the big fella in white a call if you can help. Friendship service this Thursday. It's always a lovely service. Just hope I haven't got anything booked on that day. I get I the, the diary holder to check for me. Are there any things that people would like to share with us today. I did have a lovely visit with Gwenda yesterday. Gwenda's got uh, pneumonia as well as an infection in her heart, so she's not very well, but she's very ready for her, her journey to the Heavenly Father. She's full of peace and uh, we had a, a good chat at the hospital yesterday. I had to headbutt a few nurses to finally get them to agree to let me in. But uh, yeah, she, when I left, she said, because we had the anointing and communion, and said, you'll never know how much peace this has given me. So she's full of peace at the moment. So. Uh, there was a note that <coughs> I noticed sometime that she may be moved to um, Green Slopes tomorrow. I guess it just depends on how she's going. Anything else? We um, might be a bit bereft of water by the sounds of it. Water is important for things like cups of teas and coffees. And
okay. What, it, what we mightn't have is flushing toilets at the moment. <coughs> so if you go to the loo, turn the tap on, and if it taps working, go for your life. If it's not, just head back out to the car and drive home quickly. All right, thanks Jim for the music today. Thanks everyone for joining in. Thank you to our data people down the back. Thanks to everyone for coming. This might be our last weekend with masks. I think we, we might be finishing on Wednesday midnight or something like that. So uh, it's a shame that we've got some really nice masks around the place. So we'll have to have a couple of COVID days just to wear them again and enjoy them. <laughs> So we'll, we'll stand for the blessing and then we'll sing our final hymn. <laughs> the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. You would have heard Mark praying for um, uh, the, our young couple who got married yesterday. Um, thank you. And uh, we'll try and source some wedding photos. So we'll put them up on, on the various sites. So apparently uh, Nicola was stunning in a beautiful red dress yesterday. So we'll see what we can find so that we can share in the joy of that moment. Well, in peace, God in the spirit of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.